is Reagan, and today I'm here to do my December wrap up. December was a whirlwind of a month, and it was a lot of fun. Holidays, family time, lots of videos, all sorts of crazy shenanigans. But I still ended up reading uh, seven books this month, and I'm hoping to continue that reading trend up and through the new year. But without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump into the wrap up. The first book I finished this month was London Belongs to Me by Jacqueline Middleton. This was sent to me for review by the author, and I am working with her for this video. This is a rom com novel that I've also done a full review on, which I will leave linked down below for your if you're interested. But this is a rom com story following our main character Alex, who just graduated college and moves to London to pursue her dream of playwriting. This is a story about Alex kind of coming into her own, finding herself, battling her own internal barriers and anxiety as she kind of goes and puts herself out there to follow her dreams. This book is full of friendship and has a little bit of romance and again is set in this fun city in kind of magical city of London and in Follows Theatre. It also has a very heavy presence of nerd culture and just kind of like fun Doctor Who and comic book references. This is a book that is just a whole lot of fun. It was just an enjoyable read in the way that I was entertained the whole way through. I was rooting for Alex the whole way through and I just found a lot in common with our main character. I'm about to graduate college. I love nerd stuff too. I did theater for a huge portion of my life so a lot of what she got excited about I could really relate to and I found that to be a lot of fun. I also appreciated that this book was very heavy on the friendship. Uh, Alex meets and kind of learns who who real friends are and who are kind of fake friends and she does have a romantic interest in this book but when she meets the romantic interest she doesn't ditch her friends. They they're still a very main part of her life and a main part of the story which is something I really respected because I feel like in a lot of romance or rom-coms or whatever uh, friendship starts to overshadow when romance enters the picture. Ultimately I thought this book was a lot of fun and I gave it a 3.75 out of 5 stars. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. After that, I wanted to pick up some middle grade fantasies, so I picked up The School for Good and Evil, A World Without Princes by Soman Chanini. This is the second book to The School for Good and Evil series. I read the first one about a year ago. I really enjoyed it. This novel takes a lot of the thematic elements present in the first book. In the first novel, basically the author turns this idea that good and evil are not as black and white as they seem, and he kind of flips it on its head, kind of shows the spectrum of how people can be both and how good and evil can look like very different things. This is the next novel in the story. Uh, Agatha and Sophie are kind of thrust into a new adventure and this time it's very much about gender. I was really excited about this book. I was really enjoying it for a long part of the time because I was really anticipating him to paint this picture of look this is how this world is like gender is very separated gender is black and white it's this this and this but then I was wanting him to flip all of it on his head similar in the first book to kind of show how gender really is a spectrum and you know men can have feminine qualities and that's totally fine and women can enjoy traditionally masculine things and that's totally fine because obviously gender is a societal product it's by no means you know um, genetic so I was hoping for that and in some ways the author did that but a lot of the problematic things that he created were kind of left unchecked, which made me a little uncomfortable. So I gave this book a little rating um, right now, but I hear reading for the reviews for the third and final book that he resolves a lot of what starts in the second book in the later book series, which makes me confident that I'll be able to change the rating of this series overall to one more I really enjoy. Sophie and Agatha are just such great main characters. Sophie especially is like my favorite character of all time. Like she's so funny and so full of herself but so sweet and she's just trying to come to terms with who she is. Um, and it's a really great story and again I'm really hoping that a lot of the reviews are right and it redeems itself in the third book but for now I gave this book a 2.5 out of 5 stars until I see how things get fixed. Next up I read This Savage Song by Victoria Schwab. I've had this book on my shelf for a while and I was like kind of on and off wanting to pick it up. Victoria Schwab is an author who I either am like obsessed with or I read her books and I'm like that was good but I didn't love it, it was just okay. This is a book where I absolutely freaking loved it. Like this is so good. This is a YA novel that's kind of set in this dystopian landscape uh, where there's basically a city is torn in half. At one point in time, this society started experiencing this very strange phenomenon where basically if you, if there is a heinous act committed, a murder, 
uh, some sort of abuse, something, um, that heinous act starts to manifest in a physical form or a monster. This is a world where there are three different types of monsters. One, that are very vampire-like, they suck the life out of you. Two, they're kind of like ghost-like. And the third one is a monster that steals your soul with music. We follow two characters who form an unlikely friendship, one who just wants to be human and another who wants to be a monster just like her father. It is a fast-paced, very character-driven and a very interesting story. Victoria Schwab has a way of writing people in her stories that are redeemable even when they do really questionable things and you want them to just make the right choice and you're rooting for them. This is such a great story. It was so refreshing. It had no romance. It was totally friendship based and I loved it and I am giving this book a 4.75 out of 5 stars. It was so good. One of my favorite books of the year. Next I read a highly anticipated book and that was Crystal Store by Morgan Rhodes. This is the fifth book to the Fallen Kingdoms fantasy series which I have literally been reading every year I feel like for forever. Um, and this was such a great next installment in this book. The beginning was a little slow, the last book ended in kind of this big like moment and it was kind of slow for me to get into this book but about halfway through, oh my god, the plot went bananas and I cannot wait for the next book and I have to wait a whole year because I always read these right when they come out and I hate myself for it but I can't help it. This is a fantasy series that is definitely character led. It's multi-perspective. We follow a variety of characters from all around this continent that is broken up in three different kingdoms. And there's a rebellion. We follow various monarchs. It's really, really, really good. It's just all these characters' lives start to intertwine in the most interesting of ways. And the characters themselves are just addicting to read from. You start rooting for them. And I don't know. It's just a very fun story. It's definitely not my favorite YA fantasy series. Out there but it is very solid it is very good and it's getting better and better with each book and I can't wait to see how it wraps up next year gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars next I read Sabriel by Garth Nix this is a book I've been meaning to read of what feels like my entire life uh, I finally picked it up this month and I was you know I was kind of like I thought it was pretty good. This follows our main character, Sabriel, who is a necromancer. She's been trained all of her life to be this necromancer. I really didn't know very much at all going into this book, and it was kind of interesting. The world itself is cool. Basically, there's like an old kingdom and a new kingdom. The new kingdom is like our world, you know, set, you know, about turn of the century, I think. So like, probably like 1915 or something like that. Maybe a little, little past that. But then there's the old kingdom that's like a traditional high fantasy world, but they're in the same universe and in fact they're only separated by a wall, which I thought was a really interesting setting. Also another thing about this book I liked was our main character Sabriel. I thought she was very cool to read from. She was spunky, she was confident, she was just a great main character and she was a badass and I love to read. Uh, my flaws with this book was it's a little hard to get into. I couldn't really feel like I was totally invested in the story or the characters and the plot was a little slow, but I did ultimately enjoy it and I thought it was interesting enough that I will probably continue on with the series. Uh, I ultimately gave this book like a 3, 3.5 out of 5 stars. It was good. It wasn't as great as I wanted it to be though. And the last book I read this month was Mother Nile by Warren Adler. I was sent this also for review by the author who I'm working with for this video. I have read and reviewed another book by Warren in the past which I'll also leave linked down below. But this is a historical fiction novel following our main character C. It was an American man in this novel set in the 50s and his mother is Egyptian and his father is Irish and his whole life he's been raised in America but on his mother's deathbed he basically tells him a secret. He finds out he has a sister and it kind of sends him on this journey to Egypt to find out more about his mother's mysterious past and also to find his long lost sister whom he's never met before. There was elements about this book I really did enjoy. One, I thought it was very fast paced. I was very, I fell into the story very easily. I found myself flipping through it very quickly. Uh, I liked C as a character and I thought the Egyptian setting was really interesting. I never actually read a book uh, set in like 20th century Egypt. I normally always write it like ancient. So it was a very cool setting as well. Um, I say my biggest criticism with this book that while the plot was interesting, the characters were interesting, sometimes I felt like there were some very uh, difficult moments in this, be it violence or something that makes it uncomfortable that I don't necessarily feel like the author treated with enough nuance to the point that I was sort of uncomfortable. Granted, they were uncomfortable scenes and they were supposed to make you uncomfortable, but I just wish there was a little more nuance. And it's not always with things that are bad, it's sometimes with good stuff like 
love and romance. Like sometimes I just wish there was a little more subtlety or a little more um, just nuance in the writing and how it was portrayed. But aside from that, I thought this book was fast paced. It was a thriller. You wanted to find out the mystery. I was definitely reading anxiously until the end to figure out the mystery that C was trying to uncover about his mother. Cool to read more about Egypt in this era as I don't really, again, I just don't feel like it's touched a lot in novels, so I thought that was really, really interesting. And ultimately I gave this book a three out of five stars and I enjoyed it. Alrighty guys, that is my December wrap up. Again, it was a pretty good reading month. Can't wait to read more in the future. Let me know down below your favorite book you've read recently as I would love to know and I will see you soon with another video soon. Goodbye!